Wake up for a smile each day Positive for my mindset, don't oh, no. Put this smile on somebody's face In my own little way mm-hmm. And I could get there for you, my brother No need to feel alone Then there for one another But this is journey will be there You don't say I'll be here I'll be here I'll be here for you And I will that there for you my sister You no need to shake We go that there for one another But this is journey will be there family always there for one another join us d star raising role models hello and welcome to day star christian center the home of stars and mega stars it's a beautiful wednesday evening here in lagos nigeria so some of us are just coming back from the office or for those on evening shift and night shift they're just going to their workplaces Whatever time of day it is in your own part of the world, welcome to church. We've had a lot of fantastic sermons so far, teachings that are so good for our everyday lives. You can go back and check it out on YouTube and, you know, on our social media platforms. Let us know what you think. Hashtag Daystar Online. That is the hashtag to use to ensure that you get across to us. We are available at Daystar NG on all social media platforms. Yes, before we join the present worship, shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. Thank you for the gift of life. The privilege to be here today, we do not take it for granted. We say be thou exalted in Jesus' name. Father, as we go into the service, we pray that you would go with us, bless, guide, and keep us in the name of Jesus. Give us a word to go through the rest of the week and the rest of our lives in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Before we join the praise and worship, please share the link with your friends, family members, and loved ones. Let them be a part of this service because the Lord is ready to bless each and every one of us according to his riches and glory through Christ Jesus. Let's join the praise and worship and I will see you right after. Come on, come on, come on. Let me see you wave your hand wherever you are. Come on. Celebrate Jesus. <laughs> it's been faithful. It's been awesome. It's been awesome. It's been many things. It's been our father. It's been our provider. Wherever you are, come on. Raise your hand, raise your hand and say, Jesus, I exalt you. Jesus, I praise you. I worship you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Your praise will never depart out of my mouth. I exalt you because you have proven yourself to me time and time again. Anybody excited about that this evening? Come on, wherever you are, just begin to throw a wave of hands. Hallelujah. Hey. Hey, come on. Blessed Jesus, we've come to give you praise. You are worthy and blessed be your name. Sing it again. Blessed Jesus, we've come to give you praise. You are worthy and blessed be your name everybody sing sing blessed jesus wherever you are join us yeah you are worthy and blessed be your name one more time everybody sing blessed jesus we have come Blessed Jesus, I've come to 
Somebody declare your love to him this evening. We love you, Lord. Up again. Say, blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, we've come. Woo! You are worthy, blessed be. Open up your mouth and say, Jesus, we've come. One more time, say, oh, hey, one more time, oh, Lua, oh, Lua, 
One more time, one more time, sing. 
the rising of the sun, so it's going down on the same. We give you, we give you up. We give you up. We worship you. We worship. We worship. We worship. We worship. We declare that you are good.
One more time, sing my very soul. Shout, shout, huh? praise God, praise God for saving me. My very soul shall shout. Praise God, save me. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. My very soul will sing hallelujah. Praise God for saving me. My We'll continue to want to shout hallelujah, hallelujah, praise God for saving all our roots of life, but Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Can you just begin to worship God? Oh, Lord, we worship you, Jesus. We exalt your name. You are God, you are good, you are Alpha, you are Omega. Somebody lift up your voices to heaven and begin to appreciate the name of the Lord. Baba, <laughs> we thank you. We thank you. He alone deserves all our worship. He alone deserve all our praise. Can somebody lift up your voices to him? I'm going to appreciate God this wonderful day. God is a faithful God. God is a good God. He has been a father. He has been our helper. He has been our shield. Father, we thank you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We exalt your majesty. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name. We have worshipped. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. I am so excited to see us all here today. I want to believe that we are so excited to be in the presence of the Lord. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Please go to the chat room right away and please welcome the person. Welcome some people. Mention their names. I say we are glad to see you in the service today. God is going to turn things around for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, to all our friends, to all our loved ones joining us today, this is Daystar Christian Center, the home of stars and mega stars. We have an assurance from God, an assignment God has given to us, and that assignment is raising role model. Role model will meet people that their life has been touched and other people want to be like. And I know that you are li next in line to be the next role model. Why? Because God is going to transform your life. We have the sure word from God that if you fellowship with us consistently for the next three months, listening to the teachings that proceed seat from this altar and also you identify with the training system and above all you join our small groups we have the one majorly in lagos physically and we have the daystar online community whatever place you have on the surface of the head 
maybe you are in Europe, you, you are in London, I mean, uh, UK, um, uh, you are in North America, you are in Asia, you are in Africa. You have the opportunity to join us at the Staystar online community. Just click on the link that we sent to you to the chat room right now. Click on the link and join that. We say that if you join us this three months, your life will be transformed and other people will want to be like you. We want to say thank you uh, for joining us today. We pray that the grace that is upon Daystar Christian Center, that grace will work for you. That grace will take you to a place of fulfillment. You will not be stranded in the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. All right. Uh, quickly, we're going to be giving our offering right away. I want us to please package your offering right away. We always say that the best way to give is through our electronic means. Uh, electronic means will mean you can just transfer your account. Uh, the, the, the account details will be displayed to us. Please just click on that. If you're watching us on live.daystarng.org, there's a button there that call called offering. Just click it and follow the instruction, right? And then you can give your offering. Can we just pray over this offering as we as we bless the offer right now father we thank you we give you praise we ask lord jesus let your blessing rest upon everyone that is giving this hour i pray father that you will take them to a place of joy to their place of glory to their place of lifting in the mighty name of jesus father bless someone here reach out to someone let the name of the your name be glorified in the life of this person in jesus mighty name we are prayed Amen. All right, friends, I am so excited. I want us to get ourselves ready. The word of the Lord will be coming shortly, and I want us to get yourself prepared. Please share the link with your friends right away. We are several place you here. Please share the link. Yeah, quickly share the link. Tell them that something great is happening. The word of the Lord will be coming powerfully. But before we take the word of God, let's listen to this testimony that is sent in from Ola Dapo. Powerful testimony sent in from Ola Dako, and the title is God Did It. God Did It. If you have testimonies, please get ready. You should share your own testimony also, because God is always in the business of, of doing something wonderful. So let's listen to this testimony quickly. This is sent in from Dola Paul, like I mentioned. The, type, the, the situation, he said, my wife, hallelujah, he said, my wife and I started a relationship in 2020, and we married traditionally on the 6th of October, that is 2022. Okay, we had hoped to have our white wedding in UK by January 2023. So, <clears throat> as we, uh, as she tends to be a British citizen, uh, which is a Nigerian descent. All right, he said, well. The plan for the white wedding was not visible, considering that I had to apply for a visa, a UK visa, which, as at that time, I didn't have a priority priority visit uh, visa option, and there was a bit of financial constraint. Against all all, all the odds, I applied for the for your for my visa in the middle of January 2023, hoping that. I would get feedback latest by, by May, as it had it had a twenty four weeks processing period. Processing period. Now, this is what God did. So, and we kept praying to God for a miracle. In the mid of February, I got a mail from the UK Immigration Office saying I I could fast track the process by paying for a priority um visa priority visa said. So, we had to investigate to be sure <laughs> it was not, it was genuine. Anyway, after which we made that payment. So to God be the glory. That same week that I, I made the for I paid for the fast track, my visa was granted with ease. God has been faithful to my family and me, especially regarding finances. He opened doors of favor and divine find blessings to me throughout this process. I got my visa early, earlier than expected, and we'll be traveling very soon. I return all the glory to the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is going to fast track your blessing to you. God is going to visit you. He's going to turn your situation around 
even this season in the mighty name of Jesus. If you are ready for God's word, just bow down your heads and just ask God, Lord, speak to me today. Let your breath rest upon me today in the mighty name of, name of Jesus. Just begin to pray right now. Begin to pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you. We thank you, our Father in heaven, for today. We thank you for your grace that is available. We thank you for your presence that is with us. We thank you, oh God, we bless you. We thank you for a brand new month. We thank you, oh God. We thank you. We are grateful. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. You're welcome to church this evening. This it could be afternoon to you. It could be morning to you. You're welcome. And to, to this evening, we are meeting online. Uh, yes, um, that is our new reality. And what we know that while we are here, the presence of God is with us. And Jesus said, wherever two or three hundred are gathered together in his name, he said, he's going to be there with us. Uh, we thank God his presence is here with us. And we know that in this meeting this evening, uh, there will be divine encounter for someone. Uh, there will be divine visitation for you in the name of Jesus. So let your heart be open. Uh, this is a brand new month. And God wants to do something unique for you. Uh, God wants to do something fantastic for you. And so uh, let your faith be to God. Let your faith be to God. Um, we thank God for today. So uh, as, as I mean, on Saturday, yes, uh, this is a reality here in Nigeria. We had the elections and, and the results uh, are already out. And, and someone has been pronounced by the INEC uh, as the winner. I just want to encourage uh, if it's your candidate that has been declared as the winner, congratulations. Uh, remember that what is important is for us to build our nation together. Yes. And in case it's not your candidate, I mean, your candidate was not declared as the winner. Uh, still continue to be open for Nigeria. This is our nation. And beyond your dream for Nigeria, God has a big plan for this nation. Uh, over the years, all of us, we have prayed, we have fasted for the transformation of our nation. And God is at work. Uh, God is going to use the imperfect system uh, to create his idea, to create his vision, to create his plans. So we thank God. We trust him. And so let's be hopeful. Uh, let's support everybody uh, that as one. Uh, and please uh, do not be part of those who foment troubles. Please uh, watch your conversations with people. Don't need to argue with anybody. Uh, I mean, we are one nation. Uh, watch your environment. Be careful. Don't be part of those that are causing trouble. And, and we know uh, the hand of God is on Nigeria, and there's going to be a smooth transition to another government very soon. We thank God for that. We thank God for Nigeria. So uh, this, is, uh, yeah, this is the first day of March, and uh, we thank God uh, we are starting a new discussion, and it's a privilege for me. I um, mean, we're starting a new discussion, and then on Sunday, uh, the week after, uh, our pastors are going to be coming around and to take us in this direction. So this this month, we're going to be discussing about finance. Yes, finance. Uh, money is important. Yes, money is important. Uh, money is a defense. Money is a defense. And scripture also tells us money answers all things. So money is important. So we're going to be talking about finance throughout the month of March. And uh, this evening, I'd like to title to my short uh, discussion. I'd like to title this one, Principles of financial increase, principles of financial increase. Uh, if you're watching us, please, you know anybody uh, that is going through financial issues, uh, please call that person to be part of this service. Uh, call that person. Quickly send the link to the person. Uh, we need to hear this. It's the word of God. 
and that is what God used to create everything. I mean, so someone is in financial mess, call him, call her to be part of this. I, I know that if we have believers that are in financial issues. Uh, about three days ago, I, I just heard about a couple whose children couldn't go to school, did not be to school at all throughout this term. And this is the middle of the term. Time, the midterm, and they've, they, they've not been to school. Why? The parents are going to financial issues. So we have people like that uh, around us. And uh, beyond what they are going through, God, God has a plan. God has a purpose. Uh, and uh, we believe God, as we discuss this, uh, God will do a quick work of restoration when it comes to finance for someone. I think God will do a quick work of restoration. Uh, God, God knows where the goal is. Yes, I mean, he knows we are the resources. What you're looking for, God knows. So we're going to be discussing, uh, and, and we believe God, God to, to visit, and God, God to show up for us in the name of Jesus. So please, uh, let, let's read together. Uh, as I take my text from the book of Deuteronomy, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 6 to 10, uh, from the message translation of the Bible. And I'm going to be taking... Uh, and also from the same chapter, uh, verse uh, 17 and 18, Deuter uh, Deuteronomy is in the Old Testament, chapter 8, verse 6 to 10. And so please, I'm going to be reading. Uh, so just come, flow along with us as we read together. Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 6 to 10. This is Moses speaking to the nation of Israel. Uh, so it is paramount that you keep the commands of God, your God. Walk down the roads he shows you and reverently respect him. God is about to bring you into a good land, a land with brooks and rivers, springs and lakes, streams out of hills and through the valleys. It is a land of wheat and barley, of vines and figs and pomegranates, of olives, of oil and honey. It is a land where you never go hungry. Always food on the table and a roof over your head. It is a land where you get iron out of rocks and mine copper from the hills. After a meal, satisfied, blessed God, your God for the good land he has given you. So let's read again, verse 17 to 18. The, Moses still speaking here. If you start thinking to yourselves, I did all this and all by myself. I am rich. It's all mine. Well, think again. Remember that God, your God, gave you the strength to produce all this wealth so as to confirm the covenant that he promised to your ancestors as it is today. The passage we read was uh, an excerpt of God's statute to God's statute to the, the imagination of Israel. Uh, they were formerly uh, a nation of slaves. I and mean, we know the story, God took them through the desert uh, for about 40 years. I mean, and then they are coming into Canaan, which is the promised land. And, and they, are, they, they, are, they, they, are, they are concerned for their welfare. Uh, they are concerned. Uh, and then Moses was telling them what God is going to do. God is bringing them into a good land. And I, I believe the same is for someone that is watching me. Uh, God is about to bring you into your, your own wealthy place. I say that again. God, this season, God is about to bring, bring someone. God is about, is about to bring your family into your own wealthy place. I like what Moses said. He said, in this land, he said, it's a land where you never go hungry. Always food on the table and a roof over your head. That is the picture. Always food on the table and a roof over your head. Uh, when you're able to, to have, I mean, a, a, a good roof over your head, 
once you are able to hit what you desire, is a reflection that you are doing fine financially. So here, Moses was telling them that in this new phase of your development as a nation, you are coming into wealth. You are coming into abundance. And that, that's why we are discussing this month, financial abundance. So I believe what God did for that nation back then, I mean, God is also doing in our, in our days. And you are that candidate. That young man that is watching me, listening to me, and uh, the situation might be bleak at home, things might be tough at home. Uh, God is talking about you. God is bringing you out of that position of lack and is bringing you into financial abundance. Uh, can you say amen to that? God is bringing your family into your home wealthy place in the name of Jesus. So no doubt money is important. And we, as I said, I mean, believers are going through challenges. Uh, I mean, so believers are hoeing. And so we are going to be talking about all of that as we progress together in this month, how to handle money, what you should do uh, uh, to, 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 to make money. We're going to be talking about all of that. So despite the fact that there is lack in our nation, uh, there is inflation in our nation, uh, I wouldn't know about the nation where you reside, but here in Nigeria, we are feeling it. Uh, but, but despite the inflation, I mean, despite that, we believe that God is going to visit us. God has given us this assurance. He said, do, I mean, things might be tough. Uh, he was talking to Isaiah. Isaiah, prophet Isaiah in Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1 to 3. He said, arise and shine for your light has come. He said, the glory of the Lord as, as the, the glory of the Lord rises upon you. He said, see, darkness covers the earth and, and thick darkness is over the people. But the Lord rises upon you and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light and came to the brightness of your dawn. So despite what is going on, God has just given a, a promise again here. That I'm, I mean, I'm going to shine on you. I mean, when it comes to, to finance, when it comes to wealth, when it comes to making money, and God is interested. Oh, yes, God is so much interested. He's interested in restoring our fortune. Is interested in, in settling us financially. Is interested in our financial independence. That is God. He did it for that nation of Israel. And, and the whole story uh, that led to God transforming a nation actually started with a man. God turned the, the situation of one man around. And that man, I mean, is not that person, but Abraham. In Genesis, we see there, Genesis chapter 11, that, that was the background. Uh, when God met Abraham, his name was Abraham back then, he was a normal person, a regular guy. I mean, he was married. Uh, and then with his father and his nephew and his wife, uh, they decided to migrate. They were living in the halls of the child. Things, and they decided to come over to travel to Canaan. And God took Abraham to that journey, to that journey of being nobody, to that journey of just existing, just himself and his wife. And God changed his story. God changed his story and he made him a nation. So God has done it for Abraham. And this same God wants to transform someone's story this evening in the name of Jesus. So God gave Abraham a promise. God gave Abraham a promise. I want to say this, when it comes to financial independence, making money, talking about wealth, there is a spiritual side to it. And there is a physical side to it. There is a spiritual side to making money. And there is a physical side. And I've seen some believers, they focus so much on the spiritual side. In this star, we are balanced Christians. Uh, we take the word of God and we see there 
the, the, the spiritual side of money and the, the physical side of money. We're going to be talking about all of this. So, but go, it started with the spiritual side. Everything starts with the spirit. Everything starts with what God said. So let's see what God said to this man, Abraham. In Genesis chapter 12, I, I read verse 1 to 3 from the AMPC translation, the, the Amplified Classic Translation of the Bible. Uh, now, in Aaron, the Lord said to Abraham, go for yourself, for your own advantage, away from your country, from your relatives and your father's house, to the land that I will show you. And I will make of you a great nation. And I will bless you with abundant increase of favors and make your name famous and distinguished. And you will be a blessing, dispensing good to others. Verse three. And I will bless those who bless you, who confer prosperity or happiness upon you and curse him who curses or uses insolent language towards you. In you will all the families and kindred of the earth be blessed, and by you they will bless themselves. Wow, can you see that? God told that man, he said, I will make of you a great nation. I will bless you with abundant increase of favor. So the word of God is going out again tonight. God is saying to you, he will bless you with abundant increase of favor. Can someone say amen to that? God will bless your family with abundant increase of favors. As I said, there's a spiritual side to financial increase, and there is uh, the physical side of financial increase. We are going to be exploring both together. So this same man that he left all, all of the childings, and he didn't have anything. The Bible didn't tell us he had anything. But God gave him a blessing. God gave him a word. God gave him a word. God gave him a, re a remand. God gave, gave him a revelation. God gave him a vision about his financial status that God, God has changed. And after God said, see what happened to him. In Genesis chapter 12, verse 10, the man God just spoke to that. You know what? I'm going to bless you beyond your imagination. What happened after God spoke to him? Genesis chapter 12, verse 10. Still the same amplified classic translation. Scripture says, Now there was a famine in the land, and Abraham went down into Egypt to live temporarily. For the famine in the land was oppressive, intense, and grievous. The man that just received the word, and then in his reality was there was lack, there was famine. There was, it, it, it's, it's been described as uh, the, 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 the famine was intense and grievous. Uh, there are people, yes, listening to me here in Nigeria, their financial condition I could describe is intense and grievous. We, we, there are people like that. And in case, again, I say, that is your story today. I pray in the name of Jesus, the blessing of the Lord will come on you. The hand of the Lord will visit you. And God will change your story. Your story will end in praise. God will turn things around. That is his dream. That is his plans for you. He will turn things around. So God gave him a word. And the reality was negative, contrary to what God said. Then he went to Egypt, but he left Egypt blessed. He left, he left Egypt. We know the story when he was going down to Egypt, he was afraid of his, his wife. His wife was so pretty. And he felt like uh, these Egyptians, uh, perhaps they are godless. If they see her, I mean, they, they, they want her. And my, my life could be in danger. So they both had agreed that, you know, when I get there, just tell them that you are my sister. Tell them that you are my sister. Oh, oh. That's what God said. I mean, that's, that's what Abraham said. Tell them that you are my sister. Tell them you are my sister. So 
they continue. And then let's let let's see it again. Let's see it again. Let's see it again. What God, what happened to Abraham? What happened to Abraham? So Abraham left Egypt. Let's read what happened to him when he left Egypt. Abra in Genesis chapter 13, verse 1 to 2. Genesis 13, verse 1 to 2. So Abraham went out of Egypt, he, he and his wife, and all that he had, and Lot was with him, into the south country of Judah. Now Abraham was extremely rich in livestock and in silver and in gold. Hallelujah. He went down to Egypt with nothing. There was supernatural wealth transfer. And then he came out with something. He came out blessed. And to show that God is serious about financial independence and abundance for his people, I mean, he didn't stop with Abraham. He did it again in the life of Isaac, the son. When Abraham was dying, he gave everything to Isaac, most of his wealth. Isaac inherited him. And it was recorded that even in the days of Isaac, there, there was famine as well. You see that in Genesis chapter 26. Genesis chapter 26, verse 1 to 3. And there was famine in the land in the days of Isaac, other than the former famine that was in the days of Abraham. And Isaac went to Gerar and to Abimelech, king of the Philistines. And the Lord appeared to him and said, Do not go down to Egypt. Live in the land of which I will tell you. Dwell temporarily in this land. And I will be with you and will favor you. And I will favor you with blessings. For to you and to your descendants, I will give this, I will give all these lands. And I will perform the oath which I swore to Abraham, your father. What can we learn again from the story of Isaac? Isaac was about to go to Egypt just like his father. There was famine in his, in his nation. But Isaac did something. Isaac asked God. Isaac inquired of the Lord. He didn't just say, oh, my dad did it. I want to do it. God told him, you know what? Don't do exactly what your father did. Stay here and I will bless you. And that's what I believe should be the attitude of every believer. You are in this business Things are rough in that business. So, I mean, demand for your products is low. That industry, maybe whatever the policy is against your industry for now. Before you move, ask God. Before you change career, ask God. Amen. <laughs> ask God. Let him be the one to lead you. Let him be the one to lead you. Ask him. Ask him. God did it for Isaac, and God repeated his involvement in the life of Jacob when it comes to finance. As we know the story, Jacob went to serve his uncle, Laban, and his uncle tried over and over to cheat him. He changed his, his wages 10 times, and then God intervened. God intervened. Uh, for someone here, you have been working in. Uh, you have been really, really hard work, so to speak. But you, you are not, you don't have much to show for it. God is going to repay you. I prophesy in the name of Jesus, God will intervene. He will intervene in your situation. God sees what you are going through, just as he did. He saw everything Laban was doing against Jacob. And God rewarded for someone this month of March. God will reward you. I say to someone, this is your season for rewards in the name of Jesus. No one, even his uncle, couldn't impoverish Jacob. Laban couldn't. And I, I pray for someone, no man will be able to impoverish you. No one will be able to bring you down. Financially, the Lord will sustain you in the name of Jesus, because you are blessed. So what are the principles of financial increase? What are the principles? And we're going to see some of these principles from the word of God, from the word of God. 
you know, something struck me while I was uh, thinking about uh, this topic. Last few weeks, when we're talking about, I mean, love, a senior pastor, I mean, there was one word that kept coming and from the, the message from our senior pastor. He, he, he said over and over, talking about love, he said, the God kind of fruitfulness is rooted in God's nature. Can you remember that when we were discussing love? A senior pastor mentioned that word over and over. He said, the God kind of fruitfulness is rooted in God's nature. In, in, in God's nature. So I also, uh, in the same spirit, the number one principle I want to discuss with you this evening for financial increase is this. The God kind of financial increase is rooted in the blessing of God. That is it. Understand that. The God kind of financial increase is rooted in the blessing of God. I am deliberately mentioning the God kind of financial increase. There are different ways you can make money. People do all kinds of things to make money. A lot of people do things that are contrary to the values of God's kingdom, and they'll still make money. They make other people cry. They dupe other people. They forge documents. They swindle people. We know all these things. But that is not the kind of financial blessings we are talking about. That's not the kind of financial increase that is for you as a child of God. So the God kind of financial increase is rooted in the blessing. It's rooted in the blessing. And we saw how God blessed Abraham. God said, God blessed him. He blessed him in Genesis chapter 12. Abraham got the spiritual deposit to create wealth from God. When God swore over him, when God blessed him, he got that spiritual content, the spiritual depth to, 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 to control wealth. You know, there are levels of money. There are levels. There are levels. Some people, just a couple of hundreds of thousands that they begin to feed you, they feel they are they have right. We have all the people that uh, what they are controlling is in millions of dollars. And they, they know they are controlling that for God. They know they, they got the power to create that from God. Hallelujah. So the God kind of financial increase is rooted in the blessings of God. The opening text we read together, God said that, remember, I'm the one that is giving you the power to create this world. I'm the one giving you the power to create wealth. To make, I mean, to acquire wealth, giving you the strength to, to create wealth. So when it comes to money, the devil also gives money. Praise the Lord. <laughs> uh, the, the devil also gives money. And we see it. We see it in Matthew when he tempted, I mean, when he was tempting Jesus. Uh, one of the temptations, I mean, was to, he, he, he put before Jesus. He, he, scripture said it took Jesus. You see that in Matthew chapter 4. That said the devil tempted Jesus. He asked him to bow down and worship him in exchange of the material world, riches and glory and splendor. He took Jesus to a high place and then he showed him the glory of the world. He showed, he showed Jesus, I mean, wonderful cities, nations, I mean, the gold, I mean, the, the wealth of the, the nations. And he said, you know what? For me to give you, let's exchange something. Give me worship, and I will give you this wealth. And Jesus said it. It's not possible. <laughs> that can never be done. It's only God. I can never bow down. Jesus passed that test. And for you watching me, you will pass your whole financial test. The temptations, the devil will bring you away. People that are asking you to join their club. So, so you can, can get money, you will overcome. You will overcome in the name of Jesus. So the God kind of blessing is rooted in the, the blessing of God. In the kingdom of God, in this kingdom, you cannot receive anything unless this is given to you. We see that when uh, the ministry of Jesus was, was increasing and John the Baptist that, so to speak, ordained him, and baptized Jesus before Jesus started his ministry. John's disciples were concerned for John. 
And he told them, the man you baptize across Jordan, I mean, sin, is, is increasing. The whole world has gone after him. And John gave us a spiritual perspective to that increase happening in the ministry of Jesus. He said in John chapter 3, verse 27, a man can receive nothing. He can claim nothing. He can take unto himself nothing except, uh, except as it has been granted to him from heaven. A man must be content to receive the gift which is given him from heaven. There is no other source. So in this kingdom, there is no other source. God is our source for wealth. Say it. God is my source for wealth. Say that boldly. God, Almighty, Yahweh, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, is my only source for wealth. Hallelujah. So you need to understand that. You need to understand that. So the second principle, the second principle I'd like to mention as uh, when it comes to financial wealth is this. The God kind financial increase is rooted in faithfulness. The God kind financial increase is rooted in faithfulness. It's important in God's economic system, in God's economic system, financial faithfulness is a precursor to financial increase. A lot of Christians are this, a lot of Christians, they are this, this desiring financial increase, asking God, bless me, increase me, do this, give me this. But the little God has given them over time they cannot account for it. They have mismanaged the little, so to speak, God has given them. They do not value the resources God has channeled in their direction thus far. We're talking about God kind of increase. In this kingdom, God is interested. He, he focuses on faithfulness. And Jesus Jesus explained that when he was talking, I mean, to his disciples. When he was talking to his disciples, let's read together the perspective Jesus gave his disciples in the book of Luke, Luke's gospel, chapter 16, verse 1 to 4. I read from the Amplified Classic Translation. Let's read together. It's a long reading. It's a long reading, but it's going to bless you. It's going to bless you. From verse 1, Luke chapter 16, verse 1. Also, Jesus said to the disciples, there was a certain rich man who had a manager of who had a manager of his estate. And accusations against this man were brought to him that he was squandering his master's possessions. And he called him and said to him, What is this that I heard about you? Turn in the accounts of your management of my affairs, for you can be for you can be my manager no longer. And the manager of the estate said to himself, "What shall I do, seeing that my master is taking the management away from me? I am not able to dig, and I'm I am ashamed to beg. I have come to know what I will do, so that they, my master's debtors, may accept." and welcome me into their houses when I am put out of the management. Verse five now, verse five. So he summoned his manager's debtors one by one, and he said to the first, how much do you hold my master? He said, a hundred measure, measures, about 900 gallons of oil. And he said to him, take back your writing, your written acknowledgement of obligation, and sit down quickly and write 50, which is about 450 gallons. And after that, he said to another, how much do you hold? He said, a hundred measures, about 900 bushels of wheat. He said to him, take back your written acknowledgement of obligation and write 80, about 400 bushels. And his master praised this dishonest, unjust manager for acting shrewdly and prudently. For the sons of this age are shrewder and more prudent and wiser 
in relation to their own generation, to their own age and kind, than are the sons of the light. Verse 9, Jesus is speaking. And I tell you, make friends for yourselves by means of unrighteous mammon, the city riches, money, possessions, so that when it fails, they, those you have favored, may receive and welcome you into the everlasting habitations, dwellings. This is where I'm going now. He said, he who is faithful in a very little thing is faithful also in much. And he who is dishonest and unjust in a very little thing is dishonest and unjust also in much. Therefore, if you have not been faithful, in the case of unrighteous mammon, the city riches, money, and possessions, who will entrust to you the true riches? And if you have not proved faithful in that which belongs to another, can you see? If you have not proved faithful in that which belongs to another, whether God or man, who will give you that which is your own, that is the true riches? No servant is able to serve two masters, for either he will hate one and love the other, or he will stand by and be devoted to the one and despise, and despise, despise rather the other. You cannot serve God and mammon which is or anything in which you can trust and on which you can rely. That is the principle of the kingdom. Jesus explained the principle out there. He said that unfaithful servant maximized that principle. He reduced the debt, I mean, the indebtedness of, this, of, of his bosses as suppliers or customers, he reduced it. He showed them favor. He rubbed their back, he pat them in the back so that when he is pushed out, they will also pat him in the back. That is the, the principle out there. Jesus commended him for maximizing the principle. You are not there. You are in this kingdom. That is, is not the principle of this kingdom. What Jesus commend about the guy was in maximizing the principle of the kingdom out there. As believers, what God will commend is faithfulness. That is it. What God will commend is faithfulness, managing small resources well. And Jesus pointed another thing. He said, if you have not been faithful in what is in what belongs to another man, say definitely your your own thing will not be delivered to you. So in God's eye, in this kingdom, faithfulness in, in small money, managing small money very well, you are able to account for, if your salary is just 35,000 naira, you are able to account for it. Not that you're giving an excuse that the money is small. God knows it's small. God is taking you somewhere. He knows it's small. In, you know, every now and then I, I see young young graduates they, they just entering the labor market. And then when being asked, how much do you want to earn? They will mention, they are going to, they, 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 they mention some very interesting figures. And the question is, what value are they bringing? My advice, take that small money, so to speak. As you take it and you are faithful with it, and then you are learning. You are learning on the job. Your value will increase. Your value will increase. That is just this, that is how it works in this kingdom. Faithfulness in little is important. God does not like waste. Mm -mm, he doesn't. God would rather keep the resources from wasters. If God knows that you are not going to manage hundred thousand very well. You know, some people, they find it hard to give to God from 100,000. Say, ah, ah, thank God there are no more paying tight now. Uh, so uh, I can just give offering. Remember, in the New Testament, everything you earn belongs to God. In the New Testament, it's not even about 
it's about the totality of everything you earn, your life belonging to God. So I don't want to spend too much time on that. Let's move on. In being faithful, you need to watch leakages. How are your, where is your money going? Where is your money? Where is it going? A lot of people, I mean, they don't have budgets. The money comes, they just continue to spend. And then when the money is gone, then, then they begin to ask them, say, okay, what did I do this morning? You know, here in the Yoruba culture, we have one, there's one, one demon or one spirit. We call that, that spirit Agbano, as in the spirit that comes and takes your money when you are not aware. And then that spirit will continue to, to subtract from your money until the money is gone. There is no spirit like that. It is you. You are the one spending the money. So in this kingdom, they value budgeting. Before the money comes, you know what you will do with the money. So remember the number one principle we talk about is that the God kind of financial increase is rooted in the blessing of God. Remember that. Go for the blessing. Abraham was blessed. The second principle, the God kind financial increase is rooted in faithfulness. Faithfulness in whatever resources that has been committed into your hand. God is watching it. So let's move to the third principle this evening. The third principle. And before I mention the third principle, there's something coming to my mind. Coming to my mind. I just like to say that quickly. In the parable that we read, that long parable we read, you know, the, the employee, the employee, and then there were three three people, three personalities were there. The employee, the employer, the man that had that his employee, I mean, was doing something wrong. The owner of the business, that's someone. And then the employee that was mismanaging resources. And then the third personalities mentioned were the suppliers or the customers of the boss. So for you to enjoy financial increase in this kingdom, you must belong to one of these three groups. You have to. You cannot be neutral. You have to belong to one. The first one is the owner of the business. That is the entrepreneur, the woman that has the structure of supply, producing goods and services. That is a business owner. Are you a business owner? See, there was a day as senior pastor, I mean, many years back, talking on this issue of finance, he, he, he mentioned something. He said a lot of Christians, they, they pray. They pray a lot. He said, continue to pray. He said, when you pray for money, he said, spiritually, you will be a millionaire. In fact, you can even be a billionaire spiritually. But if you don't sell anything, you, don't, you are not selling any product, you are not offering any service, he said, ah, in this area, you will not have a dime. It's, I mean, I mean, remember that video. It was funny, but it was saying the truth. In this kingdom, you is either you are an entrepreneur, you own business, or as an employee, which we call entrepreneur, someone that is working within an organized environment, giving his expertise, giving his skill. And any something, any something. So you must be, or you are the one supplying. You just must belong to one of these three. And please, if you don't know which one you belong to, uh, there are people you can talk to. Uh, there are people you can talk to. Uh, in this style, we have the this style business community. Please, when you hear about that community, their events, do not uh, neglect them, especially if you're going through financial uh, challenges. Here in this, that there are people that joined our church decades ago. 
They were nobody from the principles being taught from the altar, from the word from our senior pastors. They started businesses and they are doing well. With all the challenges in the Nigeria uh, economy, they are doing well. And these people, they are together in the Daystar business community. There are things they can teach you how to start your business, how to leverage, how to expand. So I just feel like mentioning that. God will help you in the name of Jesus. So let's talk about the third principle of financial increase. The God kind financial increase is rooted in diligence. It is rooted in diligence. Diligence. Hard work. Commitment. Diligence means perseverance, determination to perform a task. The perseverance and determination to perform a task. It's good to pray. It's good to pray. In fact, you know, <laughs> I heard this song, this 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 saying around here that uh, meal is small work, plenty money. As in, uh, I don't I don't want to stress my just small work, plenty money. Uh, scripture tells us in all labor, Proverbs 14, verse 23, in all labor there is profit. In all labor, there is profit, but I do talk leads only to poverty. That is the word of God. I do talk. Do the job. Do the needful. You are looking for increase financially, you will sweat. And I've learned this from the millionaires and billionaires God has raised in this time. They work hard. They work hard. Stop saying with them, small money, big money. A time. See, if, you, if there's anybody that is doing small work, big money, that person is an expert. Who's in boat, only runs to how many minutes? Few minutes, so to speak. And millions will enter his account. How did he do it? He's an expert. You, you are not an expert yet. In fact, you just started uh, your career uh, six months ago, one year ago. You, you, are, you are not part of the top 1% in your industry. You are not yet part of the top 20% of the industry. And you are saying that with them. Don't be deceived. God is no more. When you put in the sweat, you put in the commitment, the perseverance, God will reward you. God will reward you. You know, I, I mean, Jacob, when he was working for his uncle and his uncle was trying to manipulate his wages, uh, the young man, on the day he was defending himself, when he was running away with his wives and children from his uncle Laban, and Laban caught up with him, the man was bold to defend himself. He defended himself. He was hardworking. He said this. He was hardworking. Jacob, you know, one of the things you have learned about Jacob was he was a conny man, conny man. But he, he was smart, but he was equally hardworking. Let's, let's read what he said. Let's see what he, he said. In Genesis chapter 31, verse 38 to 40. Genesis chapter 31, verse 38 to 40. The Amplified Classic. Jacob was speaking. He said, these 20, talking to Laban, Said these 20 years, can you see the man labored, served someone 20 years. Said these 20 years I have been with you. Your youth and your she goats have not lost their young, and the rams of your flock have not been eaten by me. I did not bring you the carcasses of the animals torn by wild beasts. I bore the loss of it. You, re you required of me to make good all that was stolen, whether it occurred, occurred by day or by night. This was my lot. By day, the heat consumed me, and by night, the cold, I could not sleep. Jacob served. That is it. I want us to give it to Jacob. Jacob served. 
when he was discussing this same matter with his two wives, he said, you know, I have served your father with all my might and power. I wasn't there, you know, small work that I'll sit down and eat suya and then two pig that I drink juice. He said, I'm not saying eating suya <laughs> and drinking juice is wrong. No time for everything. So, so the God kind of financial increase is rooted in diligence. 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 And as I wrap up this evening, I'd like to give you one more point, one more principle for the God kind of increase. The God kind of financial increase thrives on generosity. Thrives on generosity. You are trusting God for financial increase. You cannot afford to be stingy. For God so loved the world that he gave. God is a giver. You are trusting him to bless you financially. You cannot afford to be stingy. While you are desiring financial increase, don't focus only on what to get. Find avenues to be a financial blessing to others. There are people, see, you are looking for a millionaire. And it's a big sum of money to you. And you only have 800,000, one millionaire. And it's like, yeah, your journey is too far. But there are people around you. What they are looking for is 10,000 there. There are people around you. What they need to buy food tonight, they don't have 2,000 there. There are people around you. What they need, what they're looking for, 15,000 there. Some years back, there was a lady like that whose mother was ill. We spoke, let's say, about two weeks ago. She just mentioned it passively. Then two weeks after we were able to, I call her, we're talking. I just remember the mom. Oh, how far with the mom? And she said the mom is still down with the illness. What happened? And they couldn't afford, this, I mean, the drug. How much? When she mentioned so ridiculous amount. Thank God she spoke out. We were able to provide the money for her. So God, trusting God to intervene in your finances, please don't be stingy. Don't just focus on yourself. Apostle Paul was talking to the Corinthians in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 to 11. I read from the New International Version this time. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6 to 9. Paul said, Remember this whoever sows sparingly, we also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously, we also reap generously. Each of you should give what they have decided in your heart to give, not reluctant or under compulsion. For God loves a cheerful giver, and God is able to bless you abundantly, so that in all things, at all times, having all that you need, you will abound in every good work. As it is written, they have freely scattered their gifts to the poor. Their righteousness endures forever. Now, he who supplies seed, now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food, we also supply and increase your store of seed. And we enlarge your harvest. And we enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in every way, so that you can be generous in every occasion. And through us, your generosity will result in thanksgiving to God. Hallelujah. Paul gave it to them. He said, give to the poor. If you sow sparingly, oh, you are trusting God for finance, and you are hearing, oh, there's this need around you in the home fellowship and you are blanking out. That's not the best. That is not the best. See, if what is in your hand is not sufficient to meet your need, wisdom says that turn that thing into a seed. If what 
what you have is not much enough to, to, to satisfy the, the need in your life. Turn it into a seed. I remembered some years back, myself and my wife, it's about 10 years ago, we were to pay about 600,000 there to doing a project. And then we will need to pay that 600,000, let's say in 60 days time, or let's say a month and a half. And then my wife will ask, okay, how are we coming up with this money? And I knew my salary wasn't up to that. Savings, wasn't, we didn't have anything like that in savings. And I just thought, let's pray. And then I was able to raise about 100,000 and the goal was 600,000. But I knew that I needed a miracle. We needed a miracle. And then there was, the least we impressed it on my heart. You know what? Show something for what you're desiring me to do. And then there was a young lady that gained admission. Her family couldn't raise enough money for her. And she was, I mean, she comes around, my sister, my wife, every now and then. And we were aware she gained this admission and she didn't want to lose it. And then I asked her, how much will she need? She said she would need to pay about uh, 50,000, between 50 and 70,000. And then we promise we give her 50,000. Then there was another man in church whose automobile wasn't in good condition. I see him drive that in every now and then. And it was impressed on my heart that you should do, that your family should do something. So I called him, oh, this, what are you doing about your vehicle? And he said, oh, we need about 30,000 to restore this. And we said, we give him. So we gave this guy. Can you imagine? I said, my wife, you're looking for 600,000. And then we gave out 30, we gave out 50. It doesn't make sense, humanly speaking. But in the kingdom of God, that is sense. And guess what God did? Like a week, the deadline for what we're supposed to give, I mean, was a Thursday. And then that Tuesday was, was a Thursday, yes. And then that week, I wasn't feeling fine. I was so I couldn't go to the office. I think I had this cold, severe cold. I was coughing. So I was home. And then one of our brothers in church called me. And say, yeah, he asked me, yeah, where were you, Pastor Bolu? And I told him, I'm, and I was home. And then he said, ah, please, can you send me your account number? I said, oh, why? He said, uh, something we'd just like to send. So in my head, I just thought, okay, we just sent something, maybe 10, 20,000, you know. And then like two hours after, I got an alert. I got an alert sort of 650. So I called him. I got this alert. Please explain. And then they explained. He said himself and some believers, they were meeting, they had a prayer program, and then a word of knowledge came out that uh, they should give generously to God. And then they gave themselves one month to come up with that uh, give, gift to God, so to speak. So he said they met again like uh, three days before he called me. The first time they met was a month ago. So they met again about three days back. And then everybody had put in the figure, or, I mean, whatever they pledged. And then they said they prayed again at that meeting. And they asked, okay, God, what should we do? And said there were words that God said they should give the money to me. At that point, I wasn't their supervising pastor. I wasn't, I just know this brother. And I, I, was, I asked him, I said, are you sure you had my name? He said, we are sure. We had your name. Then they transferred the money. For me, it was like, that is God at work. A month, around the time when my need came up, God has started orchestrating where the money will come from. And I obeyed this leading. What I had, what we have in our hands, wasn't enough to meet that need. And we gave out and God supplied. That is the kingdom. And this, again, buttresses that fact. When you're trusting God for financial increase, be generous. Be generous to God. Be generous to people around you. And God will come true for you in the name of Jesus. There was, I mean, we find one interesting story in the book of John when Jesus was at a crusade ground and people were hungry. And then the disciples said, you know what? Send them away. Let them go and 
find something to eat. And Jesus said, you know what? You are not going to send him away. You have to give them something. And he asked them, what do you have? There was a young man there, a young lad, so to speak, that had five loaves of bread and two fish. And the man, what he had was just enough for him. Can never even meet the, the need of the, whole, the crowd. But, but he, he put it in Jesus' hand. He gave it to the disciples. Those who God has put around him, he, he put it in God's hand. And Jesus blessed it. And they fed the crowd. And after they fed the crowd, Jesus said, gather the crumbs. Don't let, let nothing be wasted. And then they gathered the crumbs. That's where I'm going. The man gave, the young lad gave just five loaves of bread. And then two fishes. But at the end of the whole process, with the blessing of God on it, touching lives, feeding families, feeding men, feeding women, children, they gathered the crumbs and they gathered 12 baskets. So the question in my mind is this. If Jesus or the disciples decided to share the 12 baskets of the leftover bread and fish, how many baskets in your mind do you think that young boy should take? Whether it's one, whether it's two, whatever figure comes to your mind, that figure has been multiplied exponentially compared to what that guy gave. That's where I'm going. God is able to supply all your needs. God is able to supply all your needs. And I pray for someone this season, God will visit you in the name of Jesus. God will visit you. This month, as we go through this together, financial increase, exercise faith, faith for finance. Oh, look to God. Find the blessings of God. Find the blessing. Find scriptures. Say the blessing over your head, over and over. Say the blessing over your head. I check your life. Are you faithful in little? Don't complain. Check your life. Ask yourself, are you diligent? Are you hardworking? Or are you lazy? Laziness is not spiritual, it's an attitude. You can, can work hard against, against it. The, the, the spirit in you, the spirit that raised up Christ from the dead, dwells in your mortal body, it will quicken, it will quicken your mortal bodies. So laziness is, is not spiritual, it's an attitude. So check your, how do you, you work? And then are you generous? This evening, I just want us to lift our knees before God. You have any needs? Can you lift it before God? As we pray together, Father, we thank you. Oh, look! Can you look up to Him? He is the one that has whatever you are looking for is in His hand. That business, can you lift it before God tonight? Your business, lift it before God. Oh, your family finance, lift it before God. Whatever you are trusting Him for financially. Can you, can you present to him? Father, we thank you. I thank you tonight. And we look up to you. Scripture says your people, they look up to you. You lighten their face. Shame was taken away. I pray for that person going into financial mess. Remove him from that shame in the name of Jesus. Remove shame from him in the name of Jesus. His name has gone all over as a debtor. He's owing A, he's owing B. Lord, I ask for divine intervention in the name of Jesus. You say concerning your people that we will lend to the nation. They will not borrow. Lord, I pray, change my brother's story. Change my sister's story in the name of Jesus. And for that man that has a business, Lord, I release a blessing afresh over his business. I ask you for open heaven over his business. I ask you for open heaven over his business. Send your blessing. The blessing, your blessing makes rich and has no sorrow. Remove sorrow. Whatever may be of issue or concern, remove financially for your people. In the name of Jesus, Lord, you are our shepherd. We lack nothing. This season, I prophesy open heaven for your people. Financial blessing, financial faith. In the name of Jesus. For that person that, that, that is being hold for three years, four years, someone is tying down your money. This season, that money is released in the name of Jesus. 
Father, we thank you for supplying all our needs. Throughout this month, oh God, we look up to you. We look up to you and we thank you for being our God, for providing for our needs. Lord, we thank you for our nation, Nigeria. We decree peace over this nation. We decree your blessing over Nigeria. We decree, oh God, our borders, oh God, will flourish again. The, the borders will be open. There will be new investment in this nation. And when this new investment comes, oh God, your people will be partaker in, in rebuilding the economy in, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for providing for us. We give you praise. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Amen. Go ahead. Appreciate him. Appreciate him. Give him praise. Because this month, something is giving way. Something big is coming to you and your family financial in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. Amen. Please don't go. Let's take a moment again as we worship God together. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Exceedingly, abundantly, far above all, all you could ask for them, according to the power that Just what he says he will do is gonna fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God, cause he won't give up on you. He's able. Surprise! 
That was a wonderful time in God's presence and I had so much fun in God's presence listening to the word, the praise and worship was also impactful. How about you? I'm sure you got something fantastic from today's service. Make sure that whenever you learn, you don't just keep it as head knowledge. You make sure you practice what you learn from the altar and trust God as he comes through for you in whatever it is you're trusting him for. Oh. I don't want to go, but I mean, it's time to go. So I'd like to wish you a wonderful rest of the week. Keep trusting God. He is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you ask or think. Have a wonderful rest of the week. Bye for now. I wake up with a smile each day Positive for my mindset, do oh no Put this smile on somebody's face In my own little way mm -hmm. And I go dead there for you, my brother No need to feel alone Go dead there for one another But this is Johnny every day Don't say I'll be here, I'll be here, I'll be here for you. And I go that there for you, my sister. You no need to shake. We go that there for one another. For this family always there for one another join us g-star raising role models